way to look at Indian knowledge systems through the sort of uh, filter of modernity. And modernity generally means the impact of technology on on modern living. So look at knowledge systems as different sources of um, knowledge, which can be which are used to create technologies. Okay. So now the Western system of uh, mathematics driven sciences, physics, chemistry and, and all the stuff that follows it has created a certain set of technological artifacts which we are using which we call modernity. Now people would ask when you say Indian knowledge systems, I would like to know okay Sanskrit is a language, there is a lot of culture, civilization, art, history, all of it is fine. Now for me to use today, forget as, uh, as, as, a, as, a, as a child, as a young adult, as, as whatever. What is the use of this knowledge system to me in terms of its applicability to my day to day living? Which is when I say you have to look at it as a, as, a te- as a technology. So what technology can Indian knowledge system actually provide? Is it even capable of providing technology? And even if it does, what would such technology look like? And a deeper question, I mean, which should be, which is, which should be part of education is what sort of technologies can Indian knowledge systems create? Okay, so I'll start off. So interestingly, so we have this image of uh, Garuda. Now, one way to look at it is Garuda is the symbol of the Vedas. The reason the if you go to any temple, Vishnu temple, for example, in front of the main idol of the temple, the one opposing exactly opposite to the main idol, you always have a idol of uh, image Murti of Garuda. Now, what is the reason for you to see? the supreme or the god or whatever you call brahman or, or vishnu in, in whatever form you have to see the reflection the reflection of the of the fullness in in some entity that reflection is garuda which is the vedas again right so vedas which garuda represents is your primordial source of all technology in the indian knowledge system so people ask is veda text is veda scripture Right? Is, 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 is Veda's uh, language? Is it chanting? It is all of that, but much, much more. Right? It's, so it should be seen as technology with which the universe is built. The universe being conscious universe, material universe, whatever you call it, atoms, molecules, etc. All of us, all our feelings, in fact, even things which are seen, unseen, all of that is built, created using Vedas. So that is one deep perspective, which is the way to look at this, uh, what is what is so called as tradition or text or religious text. Vedas are none of these, right? So this is a, this, so the Vedas should be seen as the fundamental, shall we say, the, the, the source of all knowledge for humanity. The fact that it has been preserved and practiced in this country is incidental. The fact that the forms of the, the Vedas has transformed into different forms of uh, using those powers. So, what we call as uh, Murti Puja, what we call as ritual Hinduism, etc., etc., are actually technologies for using these, using the powers of the universe to create effects. Right? You have certain mantras for childbirth, what are called samskaras, for example. You have mantras for childbirth. You have mantras for when a, when a, when a young boy becomes an adult. And when they went see a girl reaches menstruating age and during childbirth, de- death rituals, all of what are all of those things? So those are all technologies to provide passage, to provide when we say passage, movement of what is you, the essential nature of you. So the Vedas themselves say, now the fact if we did not have the Vedas, for example, we would never know things like Atma. It is impossible for the human being to know that we are comprised of two different entities, the Sharira and with an Atma inside. It is impossible for us. There are so many things in this world that we will not know without the Vedas to guide us. Right? So in that way, and the Vedas not only provide you those truths, they provide you technologies to manipulate the, the world around you to actually live a harmonious life. So the role of Vedas is to cause Dharma through the Shastras, 
So Vedas, everybody cannot understand. Everybody cannot interpret. And it, it is a form of Sanskrit which is different from what is ma called mainstream classical Sanskrit. And it has its own way of understanding, its own way of using, its own way of uh, getting studied and interpreted. That apart, the entire Indian knowledge system per se, the Shastras that you can talk of, the thousands of manuscripts that are being written, let you take all things like in mainstream things like Yoga, Ayurveda, Nate Shastra for example, Dharma Shastra, Artha Shastras, all of them need to have basis. The reason they are Shastras, the reason they are powerful, the reason they can cause Dharma is because they are based on the Veda. Right? So the, the and to even to teach that in a modern contemporary form, right, which is what is called IKS or which we call loosely call it as Indian civilization systems, Indian knowledge systems, we will give you Indic centric thing. All of that finally is a small form of reflecting that there are certain truths which are in the Vedas which we are going to expose to you in the form which you can understand. Right? And all of these, so people talk of Indian sciences or Indian, uh, and they talk about Indian philosophy per se. So philosophy per, per se has actually corrupted the understanding of what Indian systems actually are. Almost all our sampradayas, all our systems, all our practices, so-called rituals are actually technology forms. You do a certain ritual, yagya, whatever, it's a technology to get a goal, to attain a goal, to create something, to create impact, right? to create impact on different activities. And those things take, I mean, the impact need not be like, like, like you cannot describe using Newtonian physics, for example, it's not a direct equation that is being solved. The reason is the physics that the, these mantras operate on are at a different level. Again, Vedas uh, describe it. And all of these, you can see it in the darshanas also. You have Nyaya, Vaiseshika, Yoga, Sankhya. All the different darshanas explain the universe with the Vedas basis and then tell you how the universe has to manipulate it. And then they tell you, you, the human being, are also the universe, a part of the universe. So all of that leads you to very different perspective of how you have to live in this universe. You are living inside yourself, you know, in a certain way. Because what is inside you is inside everything else. The larger story of only that part is sort of projected as an Indian story. But the reason is it's a physical reality to all of that. And that will lead to different ways of using this knowledge. So any activity, any sort of science, technology, you build on top of this has to have that inherent notion of being harmonious to the fundamental truth. So any new Shastra that is created or any new technology that is created, for example, you take a look at all our temples, there's hardly any we can recreate today. Just the work on granite, the work on metal, for example, the uh, uh, iron pillar in Delhi, the Dasan Trust, for example, which is considered to be again, it's a combination of both uh, biological products and metal, right? So there are lots of such examples which, which sort of prove a very advanced technology, right? The most sort of uh, obvious use is the, uh, or other effect we can see is the modern rise of yoga. And as we are seeing the rise of Ayurveda in the next couple of decades. Now, the reason for them to be to, so effective is simply because they have been practiced and then proven over thousands of years. And only then we are sort of using it in a very sort of shallow way. And all of them, despite the fact of them being westernized, modernized, all of them have to again depend on the Veda for that truth. Now, from an educational perspective, in a modern sense, for you to understand or create new technologies. Okay. Let's say you want to create, uh, so given that we are in this age of, uh, let's say this new rise of AI or the use of uh, where people say skills, knowledge, any way the computer is going to give me, what am I going to do as a human being? So the larger role of the human being here is to understand what he really is. So you know, AI has actually challenged your identity as a human being and is also challenging what knowledge actually means. Right? So what should a teacher actually teach or what a student actually learn? You should only learn things which an AI cannot do. A teacher should teach things an AI cannot teach. Now what are those things? So all of that, again, you have to go back to the Vedas, go back to Shastra, so actually understand what all of those are. So any Indian knowledge system based curriculum will create an atmosphere of teaching you things, your ability to learn new things and actually realize who you are. And then how that knowledge has to be used, created for the larger society, larger good. So one of the 
common thing he says larger purpose of education or learning per se is is ananda or delight now that delight is possible only if people around you are happy right so the larger purpose of you being happy is for people around you to be happy so assuming everybody thinks like that there is going to be hardly any disharmony so dharma dharma is going to be a natural effect of anything deriving from veda any even from our shastras so that is the way to look at why you should study veda why you should study knowledge systems in the indian world perspective it is difficult to jump into the vedas straight away but then indic knowledge systems in the modern sense gives you a starting perspective into how to explore all of this and there is and it will give you a very different perspective on how to look at life and given the sources available today information sources the internet and the slowly the digitization of indian text manuscripts uh, availability of knowledge in different forms through audios videos uh, pravachans all of that Indian knowledge system will get more and more accessible and more and more usable. But for you to be ready to use that, you need to have this basic grounding of how these knowledge systems are structured. Ki this is Pashchati, this is Bharatiya. What is the difference? Achha bura is you. You make a call depending on what you want to use it for. Right? You will make a call which you want to use it for. Use it as additional tool set that you are having. One very sort of crude ways. Look at it as different uh, wardrobes that you have. We have an Indian ethnic, so-called ethnic wardrobe, and we have a Western wardrobe. Look at these different wardrobes for your head, for your as a, as an intellectual tool. So that should be a start. And naturally, since the Vedic system by definition allows self-discovery, you will actually your brain look automatically evolve towards that. It is not; it is just a accident of fate that being Indians you get access to it first. But just a matter of time because because all of this, like I said, is it is humanity's own uh, let's say repository of richness. that we need to make sure we use we sort of curate use it for our first purposes of economic uh, bringing and for our for our uh, national identity for civilizational growth all of that will happen the larger perspective has always been always been uh, towards vishwa guru but that will happen once we we start using it ourselves with confidence then the rest of it will automatically follow